This video is brought to you by Atlas VPN. If asked to picture the ancient world, most likely the image you'll see in your mind will be erroneous. Here is why. Hello noble ones, welcome back to my channel, this is the Metatron speaking, and when thinking about the classical period, specifically ancient Rome and ancient Greece, most of us have this image of all white temples and icy white marble statues. If this is what you normally imagine, then you'll be in fact incorrect. And that is because our arbitrary reconstructive imagination based on the state of preservation of both buildings and statuary, which are of course thousands of years old, is not apt. So to try and recreate a faithful mental image of the past visually, we'll need the help of many years of intensive scientific and archaeological research of classical architectural wonders. In the same way that the ruins of a temple are just a shadow of its former appearance in period, statues and architecture, bare of colour, are only vestiges of their true former polychromatic glory. As it's often the case, things are a lot more complex than what they seem to be to the untrained eye. And there is an entire elusive secret world when it comes to the magnificence of the already jaw-dropping artistic perfection of classical monumental art. Let me elaborate. Colour, as an integral part of Italic architecture, namely the interplay of architectural and sculptural polychromy, is now an established fact. The ability to expertly utilise colour, in combination with the correct materials, and the expert manipulation of the perception of the exteriors of buildings was an integral part of the overall effects created on monumental facades and the basis of the realisation of life-like features on sculpture. We could say that this was in fact symptomatic of ancient Mediterranean art. It allowed to distinguish heroes and the divine, and it stands as a testament through time of an even greater level of artistic sophistication. But how do we know that the statues and buildings were in fact in colour? And why do we have this erroneous idea of all white being the norm? Well, both questions are rather deep. To answer the first one, we need a coordinated palette of interdisciplinary perspectives and interpretations. Let's begin with this. There are several indicators of colour being used in period. 1. Visible traces of paint pigment on statues and temples. For example, look at the head of this statue, here are other examples. So as you can see, original traces of pigment still remain on some specimen. We can call this first kind of evidence observable data. 2. Invisible traces of paint pigment, which of course require dedicated specialised equipment to be revealed. Through the usage of ultraviolet fluorescence and infrared refraction, we can now detect some of these original paints that would be otherwise invisible to the naked eye. And also the so-called ghost traces left behind some of these. Computer-based results seem to suggest that there is a sort of pattern in use within several different types of decoration features. Number three, iconographic representation of statues in colour. Now this is my favourite. Something that we can use to navigate through time is period art and representations. In other words, if we look at original frescoes or murals, we can see everyday scenes represented and within these everyday scenes we can also see that statues oftentimes are represented fully painted. That is because to them that was the norm, that's what they were seeing. And we are even so lucky as to have found a representation of a man beginning to paint a statue. Fascinating. Having considered these forms of evidence, our guiding theoretical framework of this video will be to critically analyse what the sources tell us in combination with iconographic, literary and material evidence. Now before diving into the meat and bones and the plethora of evidence and information I'm going to share with you today, be excited because it's gonna be great, I'm going to rock your world. But before doing that I would like to very briefly address the second question, why do we have this wrong or erroneous idea or image of all white, statues are white, temples are white, buildings are white when it comes to both ancient Rome and ancient Greece. And of course, if you browse the internet, you will find a plethora of articles that blame, you guessed it, white supremacy. <sighs> Why politics and, should I say, extremely politicized ideas and people need to try and invade even history of art is beyond me. 
Now, I could, of course, completely ignore this, but there is a reason why I do want to address this very briefly, and I'll do it later on the video. Now, since I want to give you a 100% neutral, politics-free presentation, I will address this on section four, where I will not only give you the real reason why we have this mental image that is incorrect, but I will also dismantle the sort of idea of, oh, it's because, you know, white statues, so it must be white supremacy, by giving you the precise reasons as to why it is, in fact, as an approach, fundamentally, ontologically flawed. It is my opinion that one of the best ways to fully understand and properly visualize ancient art is through a specific discipline, art. And there is a form of modern art that I believe can really help us visualize what ancient Greece and ancient Rome would have looked like. No, not that kind of modern art. Out of here, I'm talking about video games. The video game Assassin's Creed Odyssey did a spectacular job in recreating and accurate portraying what Athens would have looked like in the classical period, including the statues and the buildings and temples in their full polychromatic glory. Let me show you. Probably the main reason why surfaces and their decoration in colour was so important to the ancient people was because through the colours used, but not only the colours, also the materials chosen, they could not only achieve decoration or embellishment, but they could modify the interplay of light and shadows, creating new evocative mental states, if you will. Colour can convey meaning within the calculable reactions of the light in connection to ancient religion, beliefs, symbolism and culture. Now, in the Roman period, the main construction materials were wood, volcanic tufa, travertine and limestone. But as we reach the late Republican period, generally speaking 2nd and 1st century BC, both white and coloured marbles, together with cast concrete, would become the norm, and in the imperial period, followed also by brickwork. Now, there were several ways to treat these surfaces, for example, roughening, polishing, but they would also be coated with separate layers of paint, stucco, gold, bronze, terracotta, mosaic and marble itself. And even though right now visually we just experience the Greek architecture in colour, you should also apply the same for Roman architectural polychromy. Now, if you're enjoying all of this information, there is much more to come after a very brief word from a dear sponsor. Now, if you're like me and you like to surf the internet looking for interesting historical information, it's a great idea to do it in safety, which is why you should totally use today's sponsor, Atlas VPN. A VPN is a virtual private network that makes all of your internet traffic travel through an encrypted tunnel, and this way it protects you from spying, public Wi-Fi dangers, it hides your IP address and online activities. Atlas VPN is a great choice because it was developed by cyber security specialists, and among other things, it gives you access to the data breach monitor, which is a security feature designed to track any data breaches related to your online account, automatically scanning any leaked information. But another add-on through Atlas VPN is the fact that you can use Netflix from any countries regardless of where you are. So let's say that you wanted to watch a show that is only available in the UK but you live in America. No problem, just change your country through the VPN and boom, access granted. I always have Atlas VPN active on my machine, so that is because one account lets you use multiple devices. I personally really like Atlas VPN not only because it's a great choice, but also because it's really affordable, and that links to today's special offer. The summer deal for protection, that's $1.79 a month for three years plus four months for free. So if you've been considering getting a VPN but you weren't sure about the prices, then now is the time. And don't forget to click the link in the description. That's $1.79 a month for three years plus four months for free. Keep in mind that this is a time limited offer, so be quick and click the link in the description. And big thanks to Atlas VPN for sponsoring my video. The exterior of both civic and sacred buildings would have been fully decorated in full colour. The same for the beams, the columns and roofs decorated in lavish figural schemes. Architectural terracotta would be usually refined with diluted clay and then it would be fully coloured using brushes. And even wood most likely was in full colour. The only problem with wood is that it is completely gone in its almost entirety. Original thick white layers were used to cover all sorts of architectural materials. Now sometimes they could be left bare white, particularly if they wanted to contrast with then highly coloured sections which would then become accents. 
But another thing that these thick coating achieved, usually as thick as 5mm, would be to waterproof and help resisting the weather. But if any of you is a miniature Warhammer painter or something like that, you will know that you prime your miniatures before you apply paint. And so did they. Both the Romans and the Greeks had this idea of priming their buildings and sculptures with white in order to be able to apply paint more securely. Now, to focus a bit more into white marble in ancient Italic architecture and statuary, it's a bit of a late phenomenon, particularly when we're talking about large-scale usage. That is because until the 2nd century BC, marble was mostly imported, and it becomes available locally at the quarries of Luna near Carrara in the 1st century BC. But rather than just buying white marble, it was also common practice to use naturally coloured marble. Ancient authors tell us that the earliest imports of large columns in coloured marble arrived in Rome during the first half of the first century BC, even though there is archaeological evidence even earlier than that. Bronze was probably one of the most loved materials by both the Greeks and the Romans, a bit more by the Greeks, but still by both. We are aware of statues made in Italian bronze, although they would have also been painted. The only thing is that usually for the skin part that will be left bronze, so the actual metal, giving it a little bit of a golden skin look, but hair, eyes, nails and even equipment would have been painted. And bronze was also used as part of decorations on buildings. The problem is that that's one of the first things that gets stripped off a building, whether there is a sack or even just in the medieval period, so... There is that. We don't have a lot of material goods to demonstrate bronze as a decoration on top of buildings, but we do have literary evidence for it. For example, according to Pliny the Elder, bronze came in different alloys and colour hues. It was used for doors, capitals and also roofs of temples. Just help you imagine those words right now in your head. If we were to go back in time, it would be a draw-dropping experience as we were to see the temple of the father of the gods with a roof filled in gilded tiles. Now, already the idea that sculptures and statues would have been in full colour and painted can be mind-blowing, but it doesn't stop there. Silver and gold gilt, but also inlaid materials were present. Now, of course, there is a certain level of guesswork that goes into the recreation of what the past would have looked like. The reason being that the majority of the original paint is, of course, gone. So, to focus more on the statues, how should we imagine them? Eyes, eyelashes, lips, hair, Everything would have had its colour. Attention to detail would have been given even to the accessories, whether it be weapons or armour. For example, a range of fully wooden scabbards and scepters. Most likely, jewellery would have been made with real jewels on the most lavish cases. There is also evidence on some statues, particularly the bronze ones, where inlaid decoration was achieved through the usage of ivory, gems and even glass for the eyes. All in all, it appears that ancient Romans really did try to make their statues as lifelike as possible. Now let's address this silly statement that the reason why we keep imagining statues and temples white is because white supremacy. Well, you see, this is an assumption. And the things about assumptions, specifically the ones about the form and nature of social reality, they need verifications. They must be corroborated by external factors. Now. And I can't believe I have to say this, but specifically, era-based ideology cannot be used as an explanation or a motive for certain events before they were even invented. And we know that white supremacy is a 19th century ideology, strongly perpetrated in the 20th century, with roots that go perhaps back as far as the 17th century. If I want to be generous. Thus, to try and use white supremacy as a reason why we imagine all white marble of the otherwise historically correct, fully chromatic ones of ancient Rome, is ludicrous because there was already white marble statuary in the Renaissance. Thus, to try and use white supremacy as a reason why we imagine all white marble of the otherwise historically correct, fully chromatic ones of ancient Rome, is ludicrous because there was already white marble statuary in the Renaissance. So, unless you want to prove to me that someone, or should I say the likes of Michelangelo, who was born in 1475, who was a white supremacist, 300 years before the very maybe beginning of the roots of the problem, and the ideology, unless you can link the majority of Renaissance Italian art and artists to white supremacy, which, spoiler alert, you can't, the statement has zero foundation. The birth of monochromatic sculpture is the Renaissance. In the Italian Renaissance, mostly, the majority of statues were made in 
direct monochromatic theme. Of course, there were also fully painted works of art, say for example the crucifix by the very Michelangelo. I'm not saying that all statuary was monochromatic or was left white. Some polychromatic art also exists, but that's where that happened. That's where it originates. It predates any modern ideas, such as white supremacy, of quite a few centuries. And the reason why I have such a problem with it is because this silly, politicized statement has been used by the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Why are they pandering political nonsense? And of course, I'm aware that when we talk about political extremes, we find problematic statements when it comes to ancient Rome in all sides of politics. For example, on the other side of politics, we also find statements such as oh, the ancient Romans were all Nordic people and that's why they were great. Also baseless nonsense, but I'll address that one on a dedicated video. Dear Metropolitan Museum of Art, can you talk history of art and history without having to talk politics at the same time? So, now that we have debunked the possibility of it being white supremacy, the cause of all these white statues and white marble, then where does it come from? Well, there are a few possibilities. Much of the monochrome art and the beauty of white marble, which by the way, still is very beautiful, has its roots in this renewed interest towards the classical period and the heroic era of late medieval sculptures and painters. These artists were trying to recreate or reproduce a heroic past. Now, much of the color of the original ancient Roman and Greek statues had already been lost by the time these artists started to try and reproduce these works. And that's not because, as these articles flimsily claim, medieval Italians were trying to hide people of color from history, but it was due to the unearthing and restoration methods applied to said statues, such as excessive rubbing and cleaning from debris. But the main reason as to why the statues lost their color is time. The destructive power of time, which is one of the most neutral forces in the universe. It is my opinion that the information that I have presented here today has the power to enrich our understanding of a beautiful culture and past that precede us. And it shouldn't be used for petty reasons to try and perpetrate a political message. But as always, if you have any questions on this topic or different topic that you would like me to cover, feel free to let me know your opinions in the comments below. Your mind, your opinions and your positions are always taken in high regard. Thank you very much for sharing them, thank you very much for watching, and as always remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Also, don't forget to click in the link in the description below to take advantage of the amazing offer that Atlas VPN has for you. Goodbye.